parts aren't getting any cheaper. They're not getting any easier to get. So we're looking to increase that, 5,000. Uh, we are looking to cut half of the meter budget. We have the remaining meter replacements already on the shelf. So we should be able to cut that down, half of that for water and sewer distribution. You know, we'll still have to have money in there for new businesses and some of the big meters. But we have all the meters that we need for the final replacements. And then uh, 400 repairs and maintenance in the water. We're looking to increase that a little bit, a couple thousand, like 3,000. And uh, one of the main things we want to use that for is to wash the outside of the West Tower down by Greenway or uh -huh. CHS. It's pretty pretty dirty. And that'll, be, that'll come down to, you know, we'll probably do an inspection on the inside depending on, on the price too. Uh, as far as the sewer plant, same same areas, operating supplies, looking to increase that, five. Uh, chemicals, the alum we, we use for the sewer plant, increase that. Uh, and then utility services, we increase 10,000. Uh, our phone service alone, when we switched all fiber with all the, the alarms and everything, has went up quite a bit. And then water is going to go up, and gas, I'm sure, is going to go up too. And then 440, we increased 5,000. That's for uh, all the testing we do for the wastewater plant. Um, when I ran the plant six years ago, we used one lab. Now we use three. You know, the demands are, are different. We have Minnesota Valley just for mercury alone, and we have a special lab in Burnsville that we use for toxicity, and then everything else goes to UC lab. Uh, sewer distribution, uh, looking to cut the meter money there again down. And then repairs and maintenance, we added 10,000. We got to start replacing these lift station pumps. We actually have a 1991 pump in the Northwest lift station all by the dump right now. That is, we, we got a used pump as a backup, and that's actually one of the pumps we're using, so, which it's probably better than the new ones. But looking to start, you know, most most of the things we're looking at will be bought through the budget. Um, one other thing we're looking at is replacing one of our line locators. We bought the locator and the camera and all that for the third, fourth, and fifth project. With the did all the inspections and everything, and that locator just went in to the company and it's no good no more. So. We're, we're down a locator. We're actually using one that's about 25 years old right now. So, but a price on that, we got a price on that that would be compatible with the camera, is $12,135, and that would be bought within the budget. And then for the sewer plant, uh, CIP down in the bottom there, that control panel, that's being bought this year out of our budget already. So. <coughs> That'll be split, most mostly wastewater plant, but some with the sewer distribution and some with the water. And then we're on year three or four with the vac trailer, which is used to suck out manholes and shallow lift stations. Uh, we put the UV tank building on hold and move that money down to the bar screen and grit conveyor. So those are original from 2003, and they've been rebuilt multiple times and the last time that Peterson Blacksmith welded on the grit auger, he said this is probably the last time they can weld on it. There's no metal left. So we're, we're looking to get those replaced. And then year one of five, start setting 50000 a year away for the bio cells removal. And hopefully we won't have to do it for six or seven years, but you know, we're having more bio salts pile up faster now with mineral coming in and the, you know, as the town grows you take more solids. Any questions? Not on that. I'll have one in just a second. So just so the council knows on that second page or third page of the budget, so we look at those enterprise funds, sewer, water, storm, 
those don't hit the general levy those are paid for by the ratepayers um, so that's the proposal for that we went over with uh, Mike Bobani last week or last meeting was uh, wastewater increase of 2% storm 25 cents and water 10% that's to cover the bond on the new water tower was the big increase there and electrics 2% but that just so everybody remembers that, that doesn't hit the, the actual levy um, I just have one comment and I know you've got some feedback on this in the last week but just something to keep it top of mind is the mowing at the cemetery um, I don't know if it's other places we have the contract more but just as we're as a council and Charlie brings it to us we need to do a better job out there yeah. so it's uh, and part of it might have been weather early on it didn't get mowed all the time I, I get that but since the first of July I mean, there's times you go out there and I mean it's yeah, we're, we're uh, we already talked about reevaluating. Yeah, so just so on as you're saying, we things, need to things increase. Things haven't went well yeah. out there at the cemetery. If we need to increase something or whatever, that's, we'll just have to do it because it's, yeah. it's pretty embarrassing at times out there. Um, that's all I've got. Thank you for all your stuff. Anybody else got anything for Charlie? Have you talked to Joe and Manor about what they're setting aside for that five year project? For the what? For that last project you had mentioned, setting aside, or what, are, what is, is Manorville setting aside anything? Uh, they they pay a percentage. Per so it's just still the percent thing. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point, though. We do have a, I know that we were scheduled to go and meet with them, and we need to schedule a time to meet. Right. In our contract with them, there is a periodic checking, and I don't think we've really had a check-in in the last couple of years, so I think right. maybe that's something we need to take a look at here in the next six months, so we... We kind of can stay on the same page with them too because they've had some personal turnovers too yep. especially in the we're, office there. we're investing a lot of time money and resources into getting our I and I down to help improve things that helps save them money too so are they doing as much to help with theirs I know they had a big problem with all the rain and they were they had tracked it down to an area I'm not sure if it's repaired yet or not okay. but so just let us know how that meeting goes. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll let council know if you're interested in coming even, because I think, well, we may do it at staff level first. Hopefully we'll resolve any issues there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate it. David. David, library. Let me get to the right page here. All right, uh, just in case you don't know me, uh, my name is David Greenfield. I'm the new director of, at the library. Um, and really, um, most of the bu library budget is pretty much the same as it was last year. Uh, there are only two um, asks that, um, that we're bringing forward tonight. Um, one is to increase uh, the book budget to 18 um, to $15,000. Um, as with everything else, um, inflation is eating away at our budget, and uh, it books cost more than they did two, three years ago, and that line has been pretty stagnant. Um, and so, as a result, we're able to buy fewer books for the library with the same amount of money. So, we're just um, asking for a little increase there. Um, and then the other um, major um, increase is in line 309. That's our automation software. Um, last year, uh, Selco got a lot of state money that they passed on to the member libraries to defray the cost of the automation software. Um, the board felt that um, we couldn't necessarily rely on that state money to be there next year, and so we'd like um, to fund it closer to the 2023 level, um, which was 24,000. Um, we're asking for 20,000 um, for that line. Um, otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same, um, and we are not anticipating any capital expenses at the library. Um, you know, we had that renovation a couple years ago, and while I'm back on wood, the uh, library building is in pretty good shape uh, right now. So, thank you. Do anybody have any questions for David? I've, I've got one. May not be this budget related, but has there been any more discussion about? Um, uh, lack of a better service territory and getting more reimbursement from communities that use our library that aren't necessarily part of Dodge County. You know where I'm going with yeah, that. I know. Yeah, I know. Karen is a very large contingent of our library use, but we get zero support from Olmstead County cutting us a check where Dodge County we do 
but yet they're diverting Dodge County money to Pine Island because we have users from Dodge County go to Pine Island, but yet we're not getting. So is right. that, are you out there banging the drum for um, getting reimbursed for <laughs> providing a um, free service to other communities? I have not yet, at, but um, I know that that is, that is something that um, needs to be happening. Uh, okay, yeah. just something so, to keep in mind um, just because, uh, I mean, the library is a great service to our community. We, it's, it's obviously very important, but at the end of the day, the taxpayers and cash and are paying for it. We do got a little stipend from Selco, Dodge County, whatever it is, but it doesn't seem to be what it is in other communities. So we should right. just really keep on the forefront of saying, hey, we're supplying this to Byron, Olmstead County. You should pony up for a percentage of that library funds that are allocated to you to come to our library. Yeah, totally agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it legal to charge people from other communities if they don't? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I mean, <laughs> not that we don't want to, we want to start a war with Byron, but. Right. Okay. All right. Anything else for David? Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, please, Chief, do you have anything you want to add to the sheet that we have, or you want to come? Yeah, yeah, put it in your packet yep, we've got something here. Yep. If you guys have any questions, both I can answer. Uh, not any big major changes for the police department. Uh, biggest thing would be the CAT RMS system that you guys approved uh, a couple meetings ago. Uh, I got body cams in there. I put that in my budget every year. We need to eventually get those. Um, we kind of, probably won't get it right away, depending on this CAT RMS system. We might change what we use for a camera system. Uh, right now, we use Motorola WatchGuard. Uh, Axon, uh, they make the taser. Uh, they're the other big player. We might go with them if uh, they work better with the new uh, RMS system. Okay. Oh. So the 10000 for the BWC, that's body-worn camera? Yeah, body right? cameras. Um, so it's $10,000 toward that. How much do we have? Is that the first allocation of that? So, so the, the bid I got right now would be uh, body cameras as a service. It would be $10,000 per year. That's for the cameras and the software. And it's for the whole department. That's for the whole department, and it, it, it's kind of like a cell phone plan where once they hope they get you in the ecosystem and you stick with them. Yeah. Do they provide updates to hardware as it needs, or do we pay for the update to hardware? So, so that, that bit I have would be new body cameras after three years, and then five years, your contract's up, and they hope you renew it. And that, how much data storage does that give us? That's unlimited. So it's unlimited, so that, and that's always been one of the big hurdles before was, yeah, the cameras you can buy for X amount of dollars, but then you got to store all this data, which was yeah. And data is where the companies make the money now. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, they're going to store it for you. Okay. Uh, ballistic helmets and shield, is that just replacing stuff? That we have. We don't have any. Okay. We had three standoffs this year where we could have used them, and we called in Rochester Olmsted to come handle it for us. Okay. And then what? Oh, upfit to vehicles. Okay, radio. Okay, got it. And the radios, they've been there every year. We just buy two to three every year. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for the police chief? You guys started some of that CAD RMS training with the county? No. It's, it's going to take a year to build. Okay. Yep. So they're, they're building the software for us. And then we'll have, be running two softwares for a year. As they're, uh, we'll, it'll start out as a blank slate, putting the data in there. And then... They'll be adding um, all our old data into that system. Okay. The uh, membership fee, dues? Just slight increases in dues, but once for the task force and all, all the little dues we pay. But it says plus a thousand, so it totals eleven hundred. That'd be eleven uh, hundred total increase. Oh, oh okay. Dues. I'm like, <laughs> these are just the increases. Okay. I was looking at it all. It went up? Okay. okay. That's all I've got for that one. Thanks, Chief. Okay. One more thing, not budget related. So I'll probably be calling you or sending you an email about maybe getting together with Ms. Schmidt and Big Iron Classic people to kind of just maybe meet next year ahead of time with the school and everybody so everybody's kind of on the same page. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you. The other item you have there is the fire department uh, line. So if there's any questions on that, we got to take those back to the chief. What is the current A-roll for our chief? This 
totally is fifteen thousand dollars for all the officers. Um, I I would have to look, but I believe the fire chief gets five, seven, I think. No, I I, I, actually, I thought it was five or six. Or six. Five thousand, I think, maybe six tops. And then the assistant chief gets twenty five hundred. All the officers then, and I'd have to go look, but the lieutenants get. 500 to 1,000, and the sergeants, and anybody else they have with the... Uh, I, I brought it up with Joe at one of our last EMS meetings that 90 to 95% of their calls are EMS. So it would, it would be good to whoever is in that role to be definitely trained, ready to, to do that, and then have the training to support their, their other staff below them. That's, that's their biggest job right now. Not fire, it's EMS. Do you looking at that 330 training line? Is that what you're talking about for that? Just, or just in general? Just in general. Okay. Because he has talked about making it a full time position at some point as well, and we're not close to a full. -time no, we're not. Position. That's yeah. I just didn't know how much 15,000 got us closer to that or not. That's why. I, yeah. Let me. From, if you're going from 5000 to 15000 yep. that's a big increase. It is a big there. increase, yeah. I'm not saying the job isn't stressful and a lot to manage. I just have questions. And, you know, some of these things maybe need to be brought back in line or whatever it is, but to take that kind of a jump in one year probably isn't practical. Um, it'd be nice to put this, all those kind of officer positions uh, with some kind of a cost of living thing to where it's just always keeping up with it. Kind of like we talked last time about, hey, we just say it's, for those things, I think it's 3% a year or 2% a year, whatever it is, and it's just, that way they don't have to come ask for it. We aren't trying to give or take it away. It's just built into the cost of living versus stay the same for 15 years and then double it, and then 15 years to double it just hits that budget. So that's been, so that's something to definitely think about as you're going through the numbers the next couple of weeks for our next meeting to set the preliminary levy. Um, so any ideas on that would be welcome at the next meeting. Question two, it says building maintenance, they want to add five to 10,000 a year. If it's a brand new building, it should be under warranty for the first year, and there should be very minor repairs. So I mean, I don't know, as we, I don't know what your average cost to a building is in the city, but I don't know if, if you got a brand new building, if, we need to be adding five to ten thousand. I don't know what we'd really want to see. The last item on the first page. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. So it looks like in our prior years, we haven't spent more than four thousand dollars on maintenance on our existing building. Well, I don't think they wanted to spend any money on it. To maintain. <laughs> but this is a brand new building, right? So. Would we be spending more than four thousand dollars a year on a brand new one? I sure hope not. But I know you have issues. Part of the point. Yeah. But we want it. We want to maintain it as best yes. we can too, because it's new and we want it to last long. What was there a reason that AEDs weren't part of the new building? As they built it. I don't know. It wasn't included in any of the contracts. So okay. It's been a time more of an outfitting thing versus a structural I guess yeah. but there was a lot of outfitting things included in that a lot so well this is what we'll be going through the next couple of weeks come back with the preliminary so on the second page I guess we'll have to take it to the chief but uh, the third bullet point down about plowing snow yeah I saw that we already have city staff at a city plow and they if if I'm wrong they plow the lot before they plow the streets. So if there's enough snow, the city's out plowing, they will plow the fire department's lot and then they'll be doing the street. So if they don't see it necessary as a city level, that means the fire truck should be able to get out. I mean, we're not gonna, I, I just see it hard to buy another plow and then where are you gonna store it? Are you gonna store it at the fire hall? Cause, and then somebody's gotta drive in, now you're staffing a fireman and paying them to plow snow. Is that an added expense, an added fee? added liability when we already have plows and city staff that's doing this on during the day and on call. Sure. Is it a challenge for you guys to plow the fire department parking lot? Okay. Okay. All right. 
and Chief's not here tonight, so if any of these you have specific questions on, yeah. shoot him an email or give him a call and ask him about it before our next meeting so we can make sure we see what we want in our preliminary budget or not. That's a new parking lot too, so will that be easier <coughs> to find out paved? The back there, they used to have a back parking lot, correct? You didn't plow that. No, no, there's no that's where you put all the snow. Okay. <clears throat> and then, yeah. And I guess one of the things, so this isn't necessary for this year, but on that second page from the fire department, there's there's a request there to start looking for another fire truck, or to replace. So just something to be thinking about with questions for when the chief's here the next time. Would you like the chief to come to the next meeting? Well, I mean, just a little more information. I mean. Yeah. How many all the other department how old are they? What's wrong with them? Yeah, just before you before you start going down that road, just to get more information in the council, especially sure. those will be around next yeah, year. Yeah, I mean I, I think on a lot of these items, you know, and I had a conversation with different department heads and I brought their request forward because this is their kind of their wants budget. Sure. So that's something mm -hmm. to keep in mind. I mean, um, you can see some of the notes I've made on the budget sheets where you know, for example, with building maintenance, you know, I've got a note on there that says maintain. I'm expecting in the first year um, the building shouldn't have a lot of issues. Plus, I'd also like to see what the costs look like. I mean, if, if it is dramatically higher than I think in 2026, we would change that budget. You know, the feedback I've gotten from council is that you want a tight budget, and so it's hard to reconcile all of these items at the same time trying to do that. In fact, it's impossible. So, um, so not all these items I would say, like a good example would be that fire truck. You know, what is needed? You know, right now, League of Minnesota Cities, the city of Lionel Lakes has a two 2017 fire engine fully outfitted for 225 so you know it's eight years old but it's fully outfitted for 225 is that a better option than getting a brand new one it's possible it would it I mean the, the one they're currently talking about getting rid of is it like I think old one so it'd still be a huge improvement for them you know we just got rid of the 1993 like that was the one that we replaced so it's nice to have those on that 10 to 15 year gap so that when you replace one you have a, a new one for a while so it might make sense for us to do a little more cost-effective option but um, that certainly is up to the council so okay it looks like we've already been setting aside 50 grand a year for fire trucks. That's equipment. Nice. Equipment. And that gets spent pretty much every year. So, well, yeah. But it's a good I mean, we do set aside money. I would say typically the, the fire department tends, and a lot of the departments tend to spend all those reserve funds every year, too. It doesn't take much. Those fire trucks are really expensive. Well, even the extraction equipment, 60000 I mean, it, it, right. you could spend one year's equipment budget. Which, okay. But I mean, the stuff you need. Yeah, I get that. Any last year's payroll, it was six thousand that the chief gets. Total of seventeen thousand for all officers. Okay. Any word, Linda, on health insurance? Because right now we're putting temp yeah. nothing. Okay. I know he'll call as soon as he gets. It. Sure. Okay. Because we're kind of putting in 10 percent right now as a placeholder and hopefully it's not a lot more. hopefully that's in line with what it comes in at so yeah, I mean you do have that preliminary budget sheet there your your second uh, sheet of your packet there just so you can see kind of where we're at um, debt service you know I've been checking those numbers and there'll be a, some very small tweaks to those but generally those numbers are you know they, they run pretty flat year to year because that's the way the bonds are designed but um, you can see the increased numbers and it's primarily due to wages and benefits. As you all know, this was a wages and benefits year for new contracts. And so um, I, I think, frankly, seeing a lot of the other communities in our area, I think we're doing well if we were at this level. If we're able to get it lower than this, I'll, I'll feel very good about it because um, all the cities are being impacted by all the same things. Inflation and costs are going up. So, um, you know, I know we've talked about utilizing some of those public safety reserve funds. One thing I do think it's important to remind people is that that cost is still real. Even if we do, you know, absorb that a year or two, it just means that we're kicking that levy can down the road. Um, so, you know, it, it's something we can do absolutely, but I'm not entirely comfortable continuing to do that for long term. So, anyway, okay. Any other general questions on the budget? I think we got some good information tonight from some of the department heads. So the next meeting, we'll want to really kind of go through and um, more detail to get down to our preliminary budget, what we want to do. Anything right now? Anybody wants to bring up? Um, when Mike was here last time, he there was a slide, and I think it's in there. I can't, I've got to find it now. 
that talked about our, not our general fund, but it dropped significantly. And oh, our fund. Uh, Did you go to G6 there? Yeah. yeah it's you. got all those slides from yeah. his presentation, so you can take. And, and I know it was just a pro like he said it was to get based on the projection of putting 10k annually thereafter, but. Did he, has he been able to update that at all, or is that just, we're still kind of waiting based on the what, other issues? Sustainability fund? Sustainability. Stabilization fund. Uh, well, stabilization, I mean, depending on what choices the council makes, will take a pretty good hit. Um, yeah. I mean, I would expect that it's, I mean, obviously we're not going to be able to, it won't go negative because yeah. we can't spend money that we don't have there. Mm -hmm. um, it, a lot of it depends on what you want to use it for. You know, if we take a bigger chunk out of that to help pay down the water tower costs, for example, that'll mean it'll be a smaller impact to the water rates, but the stabilization fund will absorb a larger portion of those as, as cash. So, um, you know, that's something we have to just, you know, contemplate. So, Tim, look at here. Sorry, one second, Paul. Go ahead. For it. Um, one thing, the other thing to keep in mind would be um, the effect of cost of projects. So, I mean, I know all the projects are based off of, you know, Brandon's estimates, you know, and hopefully they'll be lower. You know, hopefully petroleum prices are lower next year. You know, we, we don't know that, but that is, a, that is a, and it has in the past had a big impact. Things like this water main loop was, was less expensive than I think we originally had thought it would be to, to finish. So um, anyway, sorry, Paul, what did you have? I was just going to add here, or ask, I guess, I'm looking at this uh, 23 um, spreadsheet, budget, sure. you, budget packet you gave me here. It's showing a net income for the general fund of 676. Mm -hmm. I assume that is the money that goes to stabilization. Um, right. That was split out at the end of the year and different parts of it went to stabilization and some of it was retained. Right, so a chunk of that is in stabilization, which is probably more than the 10,000 that is projected, right? That's right, yeah, absolutely. Right. So I think that going to it's Ryan's been, question. Yeah, We've been building it heavily the last few years. Yeah, and I mean, my feeling on it is that we probably have a good positive fund balance this year, mostly because I tend to be very conservative um, with my expenditures. Part of the reason we didn't get a full more last year was because I said, Ben, can't you make it work for one more year? And he, he said he did. So it was a good dry year, and a wet year would not have worked, you know, and, and I think we know that. But um, I think this year will be solid. Next year we just have so many projects. Yeah. And that's part of it is it's, it's probably going to have, and, and one, the biggest thing is water tower, because that was not something we, at, before three months ago, had not on the, on the radar at all. We just bailed a brand new water tower. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a big impact. Otherwise, that's half a million to 600,000 stabilization that may be gone, so. I just, in the long term, we've been staying around that, what, that five to six percent per year, is that where we've been overall for our increases for taxes, is that correct? Is that where we've been around five, six percent? I mean, the range has been three, between three and a half three. and I think seven, seven, seven one yeah. year. I just, in three years, I don't want to see us have to come back and say we need 15, we need 20, because we haven't spent putting money aside. One thing things. to keep in mind on that, that second page, I do highlight a few things, and a couple of them are not in there. So um, you can see, like, the, the levy is what it is, but we do capture some of that levy because it has to be paid out again. So that's something to keep in mind as part of that number is, like, the, the Hamilton tax abatement. So, you know, we're doing tax abatement for them. So if we don't capture that portion of the levy, which means our levy is a little higher, that means that we're paying those abatement dollars without capturing. So we capture that because then that gets paid out to them as part of the contract. Um, one item, for example, would be the... Uh, the the assist, assisted living facility that's going to come off the books like Mr. Rubani said at our last meeting. So some of that tax revenue that we'll be able to capture from that coming off of the of the TIF rolls yep. will actually reduce the impact to the to the residents significantly. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, last year we we saw pretty much a net net, and, and I think you know if we can get down to around that six percent number, we'll be net net again this year because of the increases. And the nice thing would be in 2026, then you're looking at some of these large. Well, another case in point would be quick trip. That'll come on for next year's tax levy, that new yep. building. And in 2026, you'll see some of the new, you know, commercial buildings come on. So EGAN will come on, yep. 507, the new building, a and building. So, and those are taxed at a different rate because of the state statute. So it'll actually generate larger tax base increase. And Zed's on there now too already. They've been there. Zed does not pay any taxes. Yeah, so tax, tax rate. So, okay. but, but yeah, no. Um, so anyway, yeah, good, good question. So I mean, I think. You know, if you look at a lot of the other communities, we're in a good place, um, but we can always try to tighten it up a little bit more if we can. So. Okay. Anybody else got anything for tonight? Paul? Nope. Does that make anything? Mm -hmm. Ryan, Mel? Nope. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you, and thanks to you guys for putting all this stuff together, too. I know it's always the most fun time of the year.
All right, next up is, let me get my agenda here. Um, administrator's report, if you have anything to add, Tim? Sure, I just got a couple things from my report there. Um, <coughs> I will just highlight the, uh, the some of the staffing changes we're looking at um, that I kind of laid out for you there. Um, we have a vacancy right now, so after discussing it with staff, we're going to look at a little different direction for, um, for how we're organizing things here because I'd like to have more cross-training. That's always been a goal for us, and uh, with some new personnel, it's going to be a little easier to um, kind of get folks out of the silos a little bit. Um, so Kayla's going to be switching to kind of a dual role with permits and utility billing. Um, Jessica's going to be moving over to help coordinate that utility billing. Um, as many of you know, we had a few quality assurance issues uh, we did this time, and, and it was a small mistake. Um, basically just punched the wrong date in, um, and un unfortunately, it, it, uh, it's just one of those things that happens, and I know Kayla feels bad about it, and she's doing the best she can, and, and uh, at the fullness of time, it's going to be good to have uh, you know, more eyes on things. So anyway, um, Jessica's going to help us with that a little bit, um, and then she's going to be kind of sliding out of that finance role a little bit more. Um, she has a little bit stronger um, grasp on utility billing with her pre previous experience, um, and so Kayla's going to be helping out. Ian's been doing a lot of the permitting work. He's going to continue to be the, the sign-off as the community development planner, um, but he will have her trained on utilizing the permitting software. And then we're looking at um, hiring either an accountant one or accountant two. That's been kind of a soft point a little bit since Nancy retired has been the finance brief. And I've been doing a lot of it, which is probably why um, things aren't always as neat as they have been, but trying to cover a couple of different things means that I don't necessarily have the time to do it as thoroughly as I'd like. I did work on some additional presentation items, so hopefully that PowerPoint people can understand that and let me know if you have questions on that if you review it. Um, so we'll just have to see who applies. It, you know, if we can get someone who's got a little bit less experience, um, it'll probably be the accountant one, but if we get someone who's maybe got the degree and got some experience, they'll be accountant two. So I appreciate Linda working on doing some of that, helping out with some of the uh, rewriting of job descriptions and things like that. So other than that, um, you know, we talked about the budget, and I think that's pretty much all I've got tonight. Thank you. Any updates from uh, engineer attorney? No, attorney? No. Okay. Um, I think it should have been under personnel, but it's under the attorney on here. Promotion of firefighter Alexander to lieutenant. Um, I just caught that now. It's listed as K1. In it the is document. listed as <laughs> yeah. personnel. It's just, it's just notice that. So anyway, uh, we do have a letter in there from the fire chief uh, recommending the promotion of firefighter Alexander to lieutenant. Any questions or discussions on that? I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Thanks, Mel. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Dan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, any question on correspondence? Okay, with that, uh, we will move toward adjournment. We'll meet in two weeks. Uh, we will set our preliminary budget. Um, so any questions on that, get them to Tim beforehand if you can, and then we can have a discussion that night to get it where we want to have it. Um, with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Make a motion. Thank you, Ryan. Do I have a second? Second that. Thanks, Dan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. When did everyone start getting the right hey, Charlie. bill now? Charlie.